In this video, I'm going to look at audio transformers. Why might you want to use an audio transformer? What's the purpose of it? Well, you might recall the concept of maximum power transfer. And that is to say that a source with a particular impedance or resistance is very well matched in terms of power transfer when you have a load with an identical impedance. Let me show you how an audio transformer can help ensure that we have maximum power transfer from an amplifier to a speaker. Let's assume that the resistance load here represents a speaker. Typical speakers have relatively low impedances or resistances. We're talking about 4 ohms, 8 ohms, 40 ohms, in other words, rather low. But various amplifiers typically have much higher impedances than this. They're not very well matched. So in order to improve this matching and get more power transferred to a speaker from an amplifier, we can use a transformer. Let's assume we have a transformer with 100% efficiency. Let's assume that it has a voltage of V1 on the primary side and a voltage of V2 on the secondary side. At 100% efficiency, the power on the primary side will match the power at the secondary side. Power on the primary side is I times V1. The power consumed on the secondary side is V2 squared divided by R. I'm going to solve this expression for 1 divided by i because this will be useful in just a moment. I want to ask a related question, and I'm going to now assume that we have some other resistance, R effective, and I'm going to assume that we have the same voltage and current on this resistor that we had on the primary side of our transformer to the left. My question is the following. What resistor, R effective, would draw exactly the same power as the setup to the left. From Ohm's law, I know that R is just V divided by I. R effective, therefore, is just V1 divided by I, or 1 over I times V1. I've already solved for 1 divided by I, and I can substitute from the left. I'm going to drop the time dependence on the voltages. We'll just remember that the voltages might not be constant. I know that the voltage on the primary, V1, is related to the voltage on the secondary, V2, by the turns ratio of the transformer. Therefore, I can write V1 squared over V2 squared as N1 squared over N2 squared. What I've just shown is that a transformer is useful not only for changing from one voltage level to another, but for making one resistor look like another resistor when viewed from some other portion of the circuit. Let's say I have an amplifier, for example, that gives me a particular output impedance. That can't be changed. That's a function of that particular amplifier. Let's say, for example, that this particular amplifier has an output impedance of a kilo ohm. Let's now say that I want to use this amplifier to drive a speaker, but the impedance of the speaker is only 8 ohms. If I hook the speaker directly to this circuit, I'll still get sound out of the speaker, but I'm not going to be able to get the maximum sound that I possibly could, because 1 kilo ohm is not 8 ohms. And we know that for maximum power transfer, it's better if these two impedances are equal to one another. What I can do, though, is to put an impedance matching transformer, or an audio transformer, between 8 ohms and 1 kilo ohm in order to make the 8 ohms look like 1 kilo ohms. In that situation, we would be able to get more sound or more volume out of our speaker. Our R effective here is 1 kilo ohm. Our real load is just 8 ohms. I can therefore choose an audio transformer with the appropriate N1 divided by N2 ratio in order to match impedances. That's what this audio transformer does right here. Let's look at its data sheet and then we'll go over to the bench and try it out. We can see here from the data sheet that the secondary side of this transformer can accommodate a few different speaker impedances depending on which connections I make or where in the coil we're trying to tap. But what I notice is that all of these impedances are relatively low. For example, I can see that if I connect between points D and point B on this transformer, then I can match to an 8 ohm speaker. On the primary side, if I connect to terminals 1 and 4, then that 8 ohms will then appear as something on the order of 6 to 7 kilo ohms. These audio transformers are very commonly used. When you open up older radios, for example, you'll often see a transformer like this just next to the speaker. Let's go over to the bench and then try it out. 
What I have built on the breadboard here is an audio tone generator. Basically, I have the output of this circuit attached to the oscilloscope, and we can see a sine wave here on the oscilloscope. My goal here in this demonstration is to show that we can get a particular sound out of the speaker with a particular volume, and that that volume should be louder when I use the transformer versus when I use some other method of impedance matching. This particular speaker has a rather low impedance. We're going to measure it right now using this multimeter. I have the multimeter here set to ohms. If I touch the two leads onto the multimeter, we can see about 7.4, 7.5 ohms here showing up on the multimeter. I expect that nominally it's probably an 8 ohm speaker. Now 8 ohms is a fairly low impedance and I have a feeling that when I hook the speaker directly to the output of my circuit, the waveform is going to distort. Let's try it out and see what happens. So we can definitely hear the audio tone coming out of the speaker, but just as I said, our waveform here coming out of the oscilloscope is distorted. Now why is the waveform distorted? Well, it's because the circuit here cannot maintain the same voltage given the low impedance of the load. The circuit has a high output impedance and our load has a rather low impedance. So we need to try to match these impedances a little bit, at least better than the current situation. Now there are two methods that I'm going to demonstrate for impedance matching. One way of impedance matching is to artificially increase the impedance of our speaker here. One way of doing that is to just add another resistor and put it in series with our speaker. Of course, the other method, and the one that we're more interested in with this video, is to use transformer for impedance matching. Let's try the first method at this point. So I have here a potentiometer or a variable resistor. What I'm going to do is wire it in series with our speaker. As I turn the knob on this variable resistor here, the volume coming out of the speaker is going to change because the load that the circuit sees is going to change too. So as I turn the knob, I'm changing the resistance here of the potentiometer. As I increase the resistance, the volume gets very weak, and of course that's not what we want. What we're trying to do here in this demonstration is to achieve the maximum possible volume coming out of the speaker without causing the waveform to distort. Let's turn the knob the other direction, which should decrease the resistance here. So our waveform has started to distort. We've gone too far. Let's find the maximum possible volume without the waveform being distorted. It's right about here. I'm seeing about 53 or 54 decibels here on our meter. Now that's when I'm not talking. Let's see what the impedance is of our potentiometer here, which was able to achieve that particular volume. The meter is showing about 330 ohms, so it would be about 338 ohms if I add the resistance of the speaker itself. Now I'm going to use the transformer for impedance matching. So I'm going to connect the primary side of the transformer to our circuit and then the secondary side of the transformer to our speaker. The impedance match that we're going to achieve here is not perfect. I've worked out ahead of time which connections to make to the transformer given the impedances that we've measured before. Hopefully we'll be able to get more volume out of the speaker than we can with a pure resistive impedance match. About 63 decibels I think it's not too bad considering that decibels is a logarithmic scale that is related to power. So what we've seen in this video is that it's possible to achieve superior impedance matching using a transformer than it often is using other methods of impedance matching such as just adding resistances to either sources or loads. This video is part of an organized sequence where I explore various AC and switching circuits. If you enjoyed it, then you might consider following the channel's playlist to learn more about these types of circuits.